We have previously been looking at different directions of light, important pitfalls, placing kickers and so on. The basics of all portrait lighting. All that is about where to put the light. Now we are going to talk about how to shape the effect of light you put there. And to do this, we must define some details that exist in all effects of light. If you don't know them, you don't know what to look for. And if you don't know them, you don't know what you can create. And that is quite an important aspect of creativity. All light modifiers do three things at the same time. Just like a three note chord on the piano. The bass tone is the shape of the shadows. The middle tone is the shape of the light pattern. And the highest tone is the color of the light. And your choice of modifier should be based on these three notes. This is what all modifiers always do. They play a three note chord, not more, not less. Each and every one of the modifiers behind me have a unique chord of these three notes. And just by looking at the modifier, you can predict the effect quite accurately. And the opposite way around, by imagine the effect you want, you can exactly tell what chord slash modifier you need and how to use it. So, how does these three notes in a modifier control the shadows, the light pattern and the color? What do you see? There is actually two kinds of answers. One might be, I see a bright light, and the other is, I see a white circle. And the last answer, that is what I want you to focus on. A description of what you see, not what you associate it with. Thinking in terms of geometrical shapes, colors, and so on. So, let's try it again. What shape do you see? A rectangle, much wider than high. The shape of this modifier will shape your shadows in the same way. All shadows from this modifier will be very big in this direction and smaller in this direction. Let's take a look. Let's do an experiment that might come through as quite boring, but bear with me. So, <coughs> I will light this boring square and we will uh, look at the shadow behind it. I predict that since this, the shape of this modifier is big in this horizontal direction but very small in the vertical direction, the shadow will be in the same way. Big in this direction and small in that direction. And to prove my point, I will not use any modifying any modeling light on this modifier. So let's see where we will end up. I just turn on the flash like that and are you ready? I am ready. So let's see where we are. The shadow is much softer horizontally than vertically, exactly according to the shape of the modifier. Let's make the modifier even smaller vertically.
Okay, so now the modifier is much tighter vertically, and therefore I predict that the shadow will change the same way. Let's twist the strip box. And now it's your turn to predict the shadow. And now let's try out a round modifier. This modifier is equally big in all directions. This means that the shadow will be equally soft in all directions. The shadows became equally soft in all directions, exactly as the umbrella is shaped. But what will happen if I twist the umbrella like this? The shape of the modifier seen from the shadows is what dictates the shadow. When turned like this, the modifier is narrow, horizontal, but wide, uh, vertical. And so is the shadow. I can also make the light even softer by making the modifier bigger. Or vice versa, I can make the modifier a really small one by placing it further away. This concludes the first tone in the three note chord of modifiers. The shape of the modifier shapes the shadow. And you can use the same modifier to create totally different shadows by going closer or further away, or twisting and turning the modifier. The shadow doesn't care about anything else than how the modifier looks from the shadow's point of view. The second note of the three note chord depicts the light pattern. How big will the lit area be? All modifiers spread the light differently and therefore creates different light patterns. Let's take a look at the light pattern from these two babies. Let's start with running back with both of them like this. Uh, one like that and the other about here. Okay, so let's start with the Octavox. And now the reflector. Two different light patterns, one big and one smaller. The light pattern is our stamp of light, and we can change the size of the light pattern by going closer and further away. If we back the smaller reflector, I think we can get about the same size as from the Octa.
Another way of changing the light pattern is to use grids. Grids are great for making the light pattern smaller. Check this out. And now, the most common misunderstanding in universe. The light pattern has nothing to do with the shape of the shadows. I'll repeat this, since I know that only 12% of you guys will remember this. The light pattern has nothing to do with the shape of the shadows. In other words, when you change the light pattern, the shape of the shadows will not change. The shape of the shadows is controlled by the shape of the modifier. Since a grid doesn't change the shape of the modifier, the shape of the shadows will not change. But, and this is an important but, actually it's so important I have put in a but in the background so you never forget it. If the light pattern is bigger than what it needs to be, it will hit the walls, the ceiling, the floor and they will fill the shadows with light. This is why the light pattern depicts the contrast. But this is totally depending on the environment. Let me show you. Here we have a random location and a flash with a modifier. Just by looking at the shape of the modifier, I can tell that the shadow under the nose won't be super soft, but evenly soft in all directions of the shadow. And what about the light pattern? Where will the light pattern stamp its light? A very good way of predicting this is by imagining which surfaces in here will see the lit part of the modifier. All these lit surfaces will be new light sources that will fill the shadows, so we will not get pitch black shadows. And if we put on a grid, I have this soft grid. this and like that there we go soft screw it on the light will be much more spotted and therefore not create all these new light sources in the room the shape of the shadow will remain since we haven't changed the shape of the modifier but the depth of the shadows will be much darker. Let's try this in another environment, the big studio. First, let's take the image without the grid. And now, with the grid. Here we have the grid. I'll just pop this on.
as you can see, the contrast is quite the same. This is because the walls and ceiling are so far away. So the key to contrast is what the light pattern lights up. A small environment gives you bright shadows if you have a big light pattern. And if you have a small light pattern, you get darker shadows. The combination of light pattern and environment controls the contrast. The third note in the chord from a light modifier is the color. All light sources have a color. It can be more bluish or orange-ish, it can be green or magenta, and this affects how skin tones render. And if you have multiple light sources in different colors, it can be quite tedious to correct the white balance in post. Gels are available in large rolls or in convenient versions like the off-camera system or the magnetic version for the A1. Snap on like this. By using gels, you can compensate for color shifts or match with other lights. Now let's see when Hannah tries different light modifiers on Nelly and talk about the three notes in the chord. The shape of the shadows, the light pattern and the color. Over to Hannah. As David so delicately put it, each light modifier does three things. It shapes the shadows, it creates a light pattern and it can change the color. In this exercise, we will not change the color, but we'll focus on the first two notes in the chord. I start out with this soft box, which is round in shape. This creates shadows that are soft and even in every direction. When turning the light on the, towards the backdrop, the light pattern changes across, and it creates a lovely, nice gradient across the backdrop. So let's bring in Nelly and take a shot. Come on in. Great, you see there? Perfect, Nelly, that's great, awesome. Okay, good, let's take it towards me. Fabulous. So now I've taken a shot with the grid on the front of the softbox. Let's see what happens if I take it off. What I'm expecting to happen is that the whole of the light pattern will be more even on the background because it makes the light pattern bigger. So let's take that off and take another frame. So now we've removed the softbox, we've got just the bare head of the light. What I'm expecting to happen is to see very thin shadow edges, also a wider light pattern across the backdrop, which is also going to make it more even. So let's put it in position and take a shot. Let's move that around. Awesome. You hold there for me, Nelly. Good job. Perfect. So this is a really interesting way to make a smaller light source into a bigger light source. All we do here is turn the head into the umbrella, which makes my light pattern bigger. This is also going to increase the size of my shadow edges, making them wider. When we turn this around, I'm expecting it to be more evenly lit across the backdrop. So let's take a picture and see what happens. All right, you stay like that for me, Nelly, that's good. You sit up just a little bit in your body. Awesome, well done. Looking round towards me. Trim round just a tiny bit. Perfect. Another way to achieve a similar result to the umbrella is to use a large white wall. Or whatever you've got near to you. For me, I've got a foam board. So what we're going to do is make this small light source into a large one by turning the head and bouncing it off of the wall. This therefore makes the light source very large in comparison to Nelly, to my subject, and also the light pattern is extremely large because it's spreading all the way from here, all the way around here. So let's take a shot and see what we get. So Nelly, you just twist your shoulders towards me a little, chin mount a little bit towards me. That's perfect, hold there. Great.